Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to open up a Cecropia moth cocoon without harming the insect inside. So I like to do this for a variety of reasons. I like to know whether or not the insect inside has survived the winter. And I also like to know whether or not the pupa inside will actually turn out to be a male or female moth. And you can determine this by looking at the pupa. So in order to get started here, you need to determine which side of the cocoon is the top. Cecropia moth cocoons will build a little escape exit inside their cocoons. And you can determine which side is the top or where the opening is here by looking for the ends that has a bunch of silk strands that all kind of go up in the same direction. And if you just kind of pull it slightly, you can see that there's kind of a little bit of a gap from which the moth can come out. The bottom of the cocoon looks more like this. It's got basically a little blunt end. You can see here that it's kind of a round little end. And there's really no place from which the moth can escape. So I'm going to start from this end here. And so you can just use your hands to pull apart the cocoon. So I'm just going to start doing that here. I'm not going to harm the insect inside by doing this, because this part of the cocoon is just silk. So now you can see here there's kind of an inner cocoon inside. You see that there? Cecropia moths build what's called a two-walled cocoon. So we just opened up the outer wall, and this here is the inner wall. And here, you can actually see that there's a little bit of an opening. Let's see if I can get it. Kind of hard to see here. There's a little bit, tiny bit of an opening there. Let me see if I can zoom in. There. So that's the opening where the moth will emerge from. Now, you can use your fingers to rip the rest of this open, but I find that a little bit trickier because the inner wall of the cocoon is much thicker. So I like to use a pair of scissors here and just be very careful when using them because you don't want to poke the insect inside. So let me see if I can turn this a little bit so you can kind of see inside as I go in with the scissors. I just will cut a little tiny bit and then I'll take my fingers and kind of open up from where the cut was. And I'll just kind of slowly do this, and I'll work my way here with the scissors to kind of open up a little slit down the middle. Again, you just want to be very careful when you do this part, because sometimes the silk will kind of press against the insect inside, and you don't want to hurt it. See if I can get this little guy out. All right, here we go. So this is the pupa, and it's actually wiggling a little bit. That's good because it means that's alive. So this here is a little boy. And you can tell by the fact that his antenna, which are these little feathery parts right here on the pupa, they're very wide. Males have very wide antennae because they need to be able to smell out females. Males will locate females by uh, detecting the pheromones the females release into the air. As you can see, he's really lively. Another way to tell whether or not the pupa you have is a male or female, this might be a little bit tricky because he's moving so much here, is looking at the abdomen here. Males have two tiny little notches right there, right above my fingernail. You can see those two little notches. Those end up becoming the claspers of the male when he emerges. 
Those are the parts of the male that hold on to the female during mating. I got a male and female pupa here, and they are both a little lively. You can see here, compared to the female here on the right, the male has much larger antennae. So you can kind of see that the females are much thinner. Usually, too, the male's antennae kind of wrap more around his body, whereas you can see the legs a little bit more on the female. You can see the legs right here kind of going across her little body. And then we're looking at the abdomens, which again might be a little bit trickier in some of these livelier ones. The female, she's got basically a line that goes across multiple segments on the end. And you can kind of see that line right there. That's going to end up becoming her ovipositor, the part of the moth that lays the eggs. Whereas the male here, you can see he doesn't really have that. He just has these two tiny little notches right there where my fingernail is. And again, those become his claspers, the part of the male that holds on to the female. Sometimes males are a little bit smaller than females, but for the most part, the sexes are usually the same size. They can vary. I mean, sometimes you'll get some small males or females, other times you'll get large males or females. It just depends on how much the caterpillars ate when they were younger. So when you're done with cutting open the cocoon and checking on the insect inside, you'll want to put it back. So you can just carefully put the little pupa back inside the cocoon, and it'll probably wiggle around a little bit. And then you don't have to tape anything closed. You can leave it like this. Just make sure that if you have like a mesh cage or an aquarium where you're going to keep the cocoons, you just want to make sure that you have it so the cocoon is leaning with the opening pointing up. And that way, when the moth hatches, it can climb out and then climb up the cage to reach the highest point from which it can then expand and dry its wings. Optionally, before putting the moth back in the cocoon, you'll notice that there's a little something in the bottom of the cocoon here. And this is basically the old shed skin of the caterpillar when the caterpillar turned into a pupa. You can remove this. You don't have to, but normally when I open up my cocoons, I just like to dump it out just so that the cocoon is empty and clean for putting the pupa back inside. So that's it. That's all it takes to open up a Cecropia moth cocoon. I hope you all found this tutorial helpful. Thank you for watching.